Hi guys, I'm in Oslo and I'm a little bit late in doing this video because I just had an absolute crazy week. Uh, and in fact, I'm, I'm doing this, as you can probably see, at a, at a park uh, at the moment whilst uh, my good mate Noel Merrigan is looking after the kids and I get 10 or 15 minutes to actually talk about what's been going on. This is actually really nice. This is kind of, like I said in Belgium a couple of weeks ago, what I wanted to do coming to Europe in, in summer is, is be able to have time sort of sitting outside on nice days like this and it's just been an epically good day in Norway. In fact most of the weather here has been really good bar one or two days but let me start with the week and tell you what I've been up to and, and what's coming next as well. So last week when I did this I was in uh, Trondheim uh, which was Norway a little bit further up north than where I am now in Oslo and that was a great spot did my workshop there came down to uh, Oslo on Saturday and this week has just been a blur of the event that is in DC so I thought I'd talk a bit about what this event is like and it's it's kind of a special one for me because this was the first big international event I went to uh, which is now three years ago which on the one hand doesn't seem like very long ago when you say three years and on the other hand is just like a lifetime ago in terms of what I've what I've done or what I've changed uh, and I'll come back to that because that was actually one of the talks I did so I was here uh, in Oslo, I did a workshop as part of the NDC event and this was a massive workshop. We had 50 people sign up for this, which is the most I've ever had in one workshop. Uh, certainly way more than what I normally have when I do them as part of a conference. And uh, look, I, I think that that's just a good indication of people taking a genuine interest in security. It's, uh, it's certainly something that I think is becoming more and more topical. And I think organisations and individuals alike are, are sort of giving more and more thought to. Uh, so that was a really positive sign. The, the thing about doing a workshop that's open in an event like this, and I, I mean open in so far as anyone who wants to pay for it as part of their conference fees can come along and go to it, is you get a really good mix of people. And I had the usual sort of predominance of developers there, but also one bloke who was a CEO. Uh, and we didn't sort of talk about what size company or anything it was, but clearly he wasn't particularly technical. But even then he came out with some zingers, found some really interesting stuff around, uh, we do this hash cracking exercise at the start of day two, and he said, look, I, I know that socially what people do is they very often have, I think he said like a first character of a password is uppercase and the next four are lowercase, two numbers, and then uh, one of several different non-alphanumeric characters. Uh, predominantly exclamation marks. So when he did his hash cracking exercise, uh, he really sort of smashed out some interesting results by filtering down to those sort of, I guess, social behaviours. So just a good representation of how people from all walks of life kind of contribute to these events and, and make them fun. So I did that workshop Monday, Tuesday. Monday night I did a user group talk for OWASP. Uh, so this is uh, OWASP Norway. And I did that with, uh, with my good mate Scott Helm and also Paul, uh, Per Sorsheim, uh, another Norwegian person who I, I've known very well online but hadn't met until now. And we packed that out. It was a massive event, had hundreds of people at it. I think it was 200 and, and something. But uh, it had a really good turnout. So that was great. I also was good. I did a talk, uh, as did Scott, as did Per. Uh, per was actually talking about things that that he'd learned out of Ashley Madison too, which was quite interesting. Now, this is still topical, you, you know, basically three years on, it's still a really big thing. Three years on, was it 2014? Two years on, it was 2015. So I did that, uh, then we, we sort of got through to Tuesday. Tuesday was um, was a big day for me because my family arrived, <laughs> which is really nice. So some of you might have seen, I've, I've had a couple of pics this week that have had family in them as well. And it's just been great having them here and, and actually being able to have a, I don't know, like a semblance of normality in terms of the people I get to see every day. Now this sort of starts to take us into the NDC event and look, the whole week is really packed out. Obviously the, the workshops Monday and Tuesday for those who elect to do them. Uh, there's always a, a social thing Tuesday night, uh, so I was out there with a bunch of people. And then kicking into the event on Wednesday. And the amazing thing about uh, having NDC in Oslo is that they run it in a stadium. So this is a stadium where you'd have rock concerts, sporting events, things like that. And it is obviously just a massive venue and the whole floor is full of vendor stands but not boring stuff, like really interesting stuff and I'll talk about that in a moment. As well as things like just non-stop food all day. So there's, there's lots of different food stands around the place. It's not like 
oh, it's 12 o'clock, let's just line up a great big queue of, of Bay Marie's and the usual sort of pretty standard conference fair and everyone lines up. So it's, it's a very, very different vibe. And I mentioned Scott before, so it was his first trip to, to NDC and, and he was just like, what is this? This is so amazing, it is so well done. Because of things like that, it's just got a great feel to it. And, and this is sort of one of the reasons why I always do these events. Now, having my kids here and having all these awesome vendor stands meant I got to sort of do a little bit of living vicariously through them, which was really cool. So I had them for a couple of hours on one of the days and we just spent the time on the vendor floor playing with VR, AR, so they were sort of going through the whole experience doing the HoloLens thing. We had them playing with robots, uh, just had them seeing all these amazing things, some machine learning stuff, just really cool stuff that gave me an opportunity to give the kids exposure to it in ways that they just don't get when they're sitting at home, you know? It's, so I was really, really stoked and I took a bunch of photos just of the kids doing things that they never would have done had they not been at this event. Uh, they, look, they even had stuff like a rock climbing wall there. My four-year-old daughter loved the rock climbing wall. <laughs> so she was going up and down there every chance we got. That's the sort of event it is. So that was kind of awesome. And then we went through to, uh, to Wednesday night and we had a cruise. So every Wednesday night uh, for the event, they, have a, they call it a shrimp cruise. You get on a couple of boats, cruise down the fjords. And this does all sound kind of awesome, and it, it, it is great. It, it is on top of the ends of very long days as well. Uh, because one of the things I also did on Wednesday was recorded a new plural site course. So myself and Lars Clint, who've done a number of these play-by-play -play courses, as they called them before, we did a play-by-play -play on vulnerabilities in the Internet of Things. And I talked a lot about things like the, the increasing prevalence of having IoT in every sort of imaginable device. Uh, devices that make sense and devices that don't make sense. Some of the classes of vulnerability we're finding. So, for example, one of the things we're finding with, with vulnerabilities is that there's a leaking of a lot of personal data. Not necessarily due to the IoT thing, but because of the services that sit behind it. And Cloud Pets is a great example for those of you who followed me uh, when I wrote about that. Uh, then, of course, we're talking about, well, how do we fix these things? Uh, so, you know, obviously a lot of the old sort of traditional web application security processes apply because very often we're seeing services at the back end of IoT leaking data, but also some other behavioral characteristics like do we actually want IoT devices to be servers rather than just clients? So there was this Miele dishwasher in the news recently, an industrial dishwasher. It runs a web server and it had a directory traversal bug. So, you know, now your dishwasher has vulnerabilities that could allow people to place files in arbitrary locations or pull them out of places that they shouldn't. And I'm, I'm just not quite sure exactly how bad it can get with the dishwasher, but that's not really something I want to do. Hey mate, I'm recording a video. Do you want to go and play chess with your dad? Who's that? That's me, on the camera. <laughs> and this is why I don't record with children. Why don't you go and play chess too? Go. I really want to do this and actually, like, actually follow this up with the behind the scenes picture. I don't know if I edit this out or if I leave the... Hey, sweetie, can you go play chess? <laughs> Good girl. That's stuff and I'm not going to edit it out. I'll leave it in there because this is all part of the experience. You go and play chess too, mate. <laughs> so, <laughs> the reason I'm doing this on Saturday instead of during the week from a quiet place when I probably should have is I just had absolutely no time because of the amount of stuff I was doing. So, anyway, getting back to it. So we did the IoT thing, the play-by-play, -play, and I mentioned the cruise Wednesday night. Uh, Thursday, I did one talk, and Thursday I did a talk that was, I just called it something, something cyber. And the whole premise there was, let's just do a bunch of cyber security things. So, things like, uh, what is SRI, and how does sub-resource integrity save you when you want to embed JavaScript from external sources? I, I kind of make it a little bit amusing giving some examples related to a story where uh, someone who built Donald Trump's site was embedding stuff off GitHub, which you know, kind of has obvious risks there should someone update the, uh, the JavaScript to do something a little bit malicious. So I did that, did a whole bunch of stuff around the way data gets exposed with database backups just all over the place and public web servers. Did a lot on SQL injection, got my seven-year-old son uh, to demonstrate SQL injection with Havage. 
And it, look, I mean, maybe it's cheating a little bit using a kid as part of your talk, but it did rock. It was really well received. And really the underlying story here was that this is a vulnerability that is so easy to exploit that if you can teach someone how to copy and paste text, they're in there. They can, they can basically just get data out of databases. So uh, that went well. I got my evals for that. I think we got 100, no, 236 green feedback, uh, two yellow, no red, which is about as close to perfect, almost about as close as perfect uh, as we can get without actually hitting perfection. So I was pretty happy with that. Now on uh, Thursday night as well, what did we do Thursday night? We had the party night. So they actually have a band that they run uh, as part of this uh, event. They run it in the arena. I did another talk during Thursday night on spectacular fails, which is kind of cool. So there's a section there they run these days about how did you fail? And I had a story of, of failure, uh, which admittedly was not really my fault, but on a project that I was working in uh, in my previous life in Pfizer. And my previous life on Pfizer then brings me to the next thing I did, which was Friday morning, I did a talk called Hack Your Career. Now this was the first time I'd ever done this talk. I was getting a bit windy here. First time I'd ever done this talk, and to be honest, I was kind of, kind of interested in how to be received. It's a soft skills talk, and it was very much about how I went from being just in corporate life to starting to have some independence and some choices, and ultimately being entirely independent. And I wasn't quite sure, you know, how many people would come along to it, how many people would be interested, but it went great. I had uh, not quite as many people as the talk the night before, but still a lot. Feedback was really positive. I think it was about 150 something green, six yellow, no red. So, you know, look, once you're getting 95% sort of plus green, you, you can't, can't not be happy with that. And anyway, this talk had a lot of stuff that was, to be honest, very personal about the experiences I had and the, the, the way that environment made me feel and uh, also the way my life is today and some of the, the choices I have as a result of, of the things I've done with building an online profile and going pretty independent. So that was a really good talk as well. I was, I was just really happy with the way that went and the fact that so many people were interested. And I had great feedback on Twitter, very passionate feedback. You know, one bloke said it, it, it brought him to tears, uh, and he meant that in the good way. <laughs> so, you know, clearly it hits a nerve with some people. Now, both those talks will be live uh, somewhere online where you can go and watch them again, usually within the next few weeks. And I'll be sharing those on my blog when they are. So they were great, and then Friday night we had PubConf. And PubConf is, is really a highlight of the NDC talks. It's sort of run in parallel, but independently. And it is in a pub, and this year we had 10 speakers, uh, of which I was one of them. My wife, Kylie, was another. Now, she also did a soft skills talk on Thursday, which went very, very well too, so she was quite happy. So there's Kylie, myself, and other, uh, eight other people doing five-minute lightning talks. So 20 slides, 15 seconds each, and they rotate automatically after 15 seconds. And they're meant to be highly amusing. And I can just see my daughter and Niall and his son now going back to the ramp line, which is good. <laughs> so maybe they won't jump on my head again while they finish this. Anyway, so PubCon's fantastic because it's, look, I mean, everyone's out there drinking beer, they're relaxed, nothing is recorded, it's all off the record. The code of conduct is don't be a dick, uh, which frankly, I think is a very good code of conduct for most conferences. <laughs> but where it is a little bit more liberal than most events is that, Look, it's off the record, it's casual, uh, you're going to be, you're going to be, look, more direct. And I won't go into details about what we say and what we do in these events. Just come along and do one because they're awesome. So anyway, the 10 of us spoke uh, and what they end up doing this year is they said, look, we're going to pick the three best ones. So they had sort of some random judges in the audience uh, who picked the three best talks. And I was not in there, but Kylie was. Uh, Kylie. Damien Brady and uh, Mark Rendell were there as well. And so they had to have like an Ignite karaoke uh, speak off, for want of a better term. So this is a slide deck they'd never seen before and they have to talk to it and they have to try and sound amusing and insightful. And they all did a fantastic job. And then as it panned out, uh, Kylie won. So I was really, really proud to see my wife actually win, uh, win pub comp and win speaker karaoke. It was, it was just a really good thing to sort of see her doing so well at it. Um, and the best thing about it was she won a, a bottle of 21-year-old, uh, uh, what was it? 
I'm gonna to have to check, maybe I'll put that in the notes, but a very nice bottle of whiskey, which she doesn't drink, but I do. So that worked out very nicely. So that was PubCon, that was last night. So we're now on, on Saturday and I've, I've just been trying to catch up on, to be honest, catch up on a bit of my sanity without rushing between uh, events. Tomorrow I'm gonna to be off to Amsterdam and I'll be in the Netherlands all of next week. Uh, I'll be doing, I'll be trying to do this, uh, this update from Leiden next week. So I'm actually mostly having holidays next week. Uh, part of the reason I'm going to be in Leiden is that I used to live next to Leiden. So for the Dutch people there, I, was, I spent a couple of years there in my teenage years a while back. So that's a, a kind of a special place for me. So I'll be there next week. Last thing for this week is I am being sponsored by uh, Exabeam for this week. And I very much appreciate those guys being around. Another kid. <laughs> I appreciate those guys being around and helping me do what I do. And uh, that's, uh, that's really great that they're sort of part of the, I guess, the sponsorship continuum that is helping me do all this without any more ads, which makes me enormously happy. So thank you very much for watching. I am sorry this is a little bit late. I hope it comes out okay, even with the kids jumping on my head. And I will talk to you next week.